so it's it's past 5:30, so we can open the hearing of the zoning board of appeals. Um, uh, my name is David Bloomberg, and I'm joined by Sarah Northrup, Maureen Scallon, Elizabeth Silver, and Bob Riddle as board members. And uh, Carolyn Mish is here from the Office of Planning and Sustainability, providing support and assistance. And um, uh, we have three items on the agenda for tonight. Notice of this hearing was published May 9th, May 16th, and, and May 16th, 2019. And um, um, I'll start by asking, is there anyone here from the public who wanted to address the board uh, in about something other than any of the three applications that are on the agenda for tonight? In other words, general public comment. Seeing none, none I'll move on. Um, and I'll ask for each application. Uh, we'll start by having the applicant or the representative of the applicant just come up to the podium and introduce yourself by name and address. Um, and then the board, and then uh, give us a brief uh, summary of your application. The board will have a chance to ask questions. And then um, after the board has had an opportunity to ask questions that we might have, uh, members of the public will have an opportunity to address the application. Uh, and again, I ask each person who speaks to come up to the podium and introduce yourself by name and address for the record that we're keeping. And I ask that all questions and statements be addressed to the board, not to each other or to the applicant. Um, so the first item on the agenda is a request for a commercial finding for co by Cosmic Cab relating to the property at 23 Hooker Avenue, Northampton, map ID 24D-125. And this is familiar, um, but I'll let the uh, representative of the applicant come up and, uh, and address the outcome us, please. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Miller, 241 Hayden Hill Road, uh, Leeds, Massachusetts. Thank you. Order of Cosmic Cow. Um, we had a temporary permit in place until April of this year, asking for it to be uh, made permanent in this case. Uh, parking for was uh, under the conditions of the original or temporary permit was for three vehicles overnight. I'm actually asking for four. Um, I also now have a, another parking agreement with the uh, commercial parking in town for two vehicles. So I'm hoping for four, not just to park them there, because right now I wouldn't even be parking, um, probably be one for the, for the short term. It's just that the, in, the, in the case that things change, or if I have to park them there, I don't want to feel like I'm operating out of the constraints of the permit. Um, also, asking for one unregistered vehicle, being a, the taxi company, I found it almost impossible to operate without having at least one vehicle, because if I have one break down, uh, sometimes I take it off the road until I can fix it or figure out what to do with it. And it just makes sense um, that that would be allowed. Otherwise, everything else will need an additional cab, three, four, nine. Oh yeah, and the one additional operating out of sight is just because I need that for my to fulfill my obligation for a license permit through the city council. So if they see that you've only allowed five, then I'm limited to five cabs. So it doesn't mean that six cabs will ever even be there. It just means that I need to have that because if I'm operating out of that space, they're requiring me to have full compliance. <coughs> so that would mean if I wanted to add a cab, I would need also to have you know uh, six cabs operating which was the same with the five cabs operating, but with three parked. But now I would be asking for six operating with four parked. And like I said, not to say that those would park, I have, I have an agreement here with uh, the Northampton market for two parking spots. And I'm also looking for more parking spots that I can lease, you know, to, to alleviate the stress and the tra and traffic concern congestion on them. So, um, just to review from a year ago, um, the conditions of the approval were one that it would expire April 30th, 2019. 
two, that no more than five cabs operate at the site, and you're asking that to be increased to six? Right? Yes. Three, that no more than three cabs shall be stored overnight on the property, and you're asking that to be increased to four? Four, that off-street parking shall be at least five feet from the street and no more than two vehicles shall be in the 10-foot front setback. No change there. Five, there shall be no on-street employee or cab parking. Six, there shall be no idling of employee or cab vehicles. Seven, vehicles shall not be parked so as to block private residential driveways. Eight, vehicle turnaround shall be done using the site driveway. Nine, no car maintenance is allowed between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. And 10, all unregistered vehicles shall be removed by September 1, 2018. And you want that to change to allow one unregistered vehicle on the premises. Okay, I'm doing this one as a reminder to everyone who might be here, including the board, but two, so we're crystal clear about really the expansions that you're requesting uh, to the conditions that were approved a year ago. So five to six cabs operating, three to four cabs stored overnight, and one unregistered vehicle instead of zero. Yeah. Um, planned use indicates that he's requesting two unregistered vehicles. Oh, did, is it one or two? Uh, only one. Oh, two. Did I put two there? Yeah, they don't have to... No, I would, I would just be asking for one. So, I mean, okay, so, so, so you are only requesting one. Yes, so, Okay. Um, and, and I understand from our notes that at least the building department and the Office of Planning and Sustainability has not received any complaints filed since this was approved, I said a year ago, but last August. Uh, any other questions from board members? I, I would like to hear about the unregistered car, but our uh, condition with the unregistered cars being removed. Were, was there any follow up on that? Any attempt on that? Of course, yeah. No, I, I had removed the vehicles, but then, you know, of, of course, like, like our vehicles are constantly running, and then I had one break down, and it, it's, you know, it's expensive for me to to just scrap it and then have to buy another vehicle. I'm trying to use what I have here. So if I, you know, if it's down for a month or two, it doesn't mean it's gone. It just means, you know, and if I have to get rid of it, that's just a, a, a lot more of an expense for me because then I have to go source another vehicle, whereas I could just use that vehicle. Um, that was. I'd like to clarify that when it says no, uh, the current or uh, the condition from last year about no more than three cabs stored overnight um, that's outdoors on the property right because they could park a vehicle inside in the workshop overnight so that's, I think I think that's so is your request to it yeah I think yeah yes, that's what that's so is your request for an increase from three to four Vehicles to be stored over. I store it inside. I mean, if that's a part of the condition, that's that's a, that's fine. Well, I think you could already do it inside. Yeah. Uh, as long as there are no more than three outside. Oh. Okay. And if that's well, agreeable, I don't think we even have to make a change there. Am I interpreting that correctly? Uh, correct. The only thing that I would ask is because of, like I said, my you know obligations with city council for my permits for each individual taxing and my business permit, operator's permit, uh, they need to see that I'm in compliance at this address with the amount of, any amount of caps that I would have. How much room operating. do you have to put vehicles indoors on your property? How much room? Yeah, I mean, how many, are there bay garage bays? Probably about the size. You could probably size. put three vehicles in. Yeah, okay. I think I'd say it's about. Okay, so it size. seems like compliance shouldn't be an issue even with a limit of three stored outdoors, if there's plenty of room indoors. Yes. Okay. There's um, eight stored outdoors here in these photographs. So. Those are old photos. Those are taken before. Yeah, but there's room for eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I and mean, there's plenty of room there. And you can turn around. But <laughs> oh, we're it's talking about a limit of three right. outdoors right. overnight. Right. Which, and I think what I'm hearing is that maybe doesn't have to change. I'm that seeing if we can narrow this down at all. If, if that's all right to park indoors, then 
I wouldn't have a, an issue. The only issue I would have is the first line. No more than five caps operating at the site. That limits me to, you know, I, I don't know if there's any way to circumvent that as far as city council, because even if I had eight cabs, there's, because it says five caps operating site, and I have to be in right. full compliance. Well, that one, that, that that's a operate. separate item, and, and I realize you're, you're asking to increase that one to six. Yes. Okay, and that we're, before we get to that one, Elizabeth, you had a question Well, about I, I just don't recall that the three cabs stored overnight, that the word outside was part of that. I didn't see it, the word in there. Right. So, I, but what I was hearing you say, David, was that if there was one inside, there's three outside, and that's still meeting this. And I, well, that I was not, based on Carolyn's recollection. I don't, I didn't recall our making that distinction. Um, yeah, it's... I think, so typically, um, the ordinance is concerned about sort of that out exterior appearance. This case, so uh, I think um, typically outside storage is the, is the issue that needs to be minimized or screened. In this case, I, I would agree with you, it's, um, there were a lot of other issues about the number of people and vehicles traveling to and from the site. So um, I couldn't say 100% sure that it wasn't, in all cases, not more than the three vehicles on site. Um, but I also don't recall, though, at the time whether there were other things going on inside the building that I think limited space or next to the building. So I don't, I don't know if that was. I don't recall if it was part of our discussion. I'm curious about our original condition number four and how this might impact it. Uh, off street parking shall be at least five feet from the street and no more than two vehicles shall be in the 10 foot front setback. Would the addition of another car, would it still permit you to be in that in compliance with that condition? Yeah, because we could park in the back and on the side there's. Okay, so. Yeah. The, we could still maintain that condition. Yeah, oh yeah. Without needing to hold yeah, no, that wouldn't change anyway because we I don't want to congest that area for our purposes, not just for the And that would be a violation of zoning if they didn't comply with that. Okay, anyway. I would like just to note that there's normally one or two other vehicles there that aren't cab company. There's just like a boat parked out back and another vehicle from some other business that rents it. Back park building. Just so you know, that is the moving this summer. The well, that other business? Yeah. Well, the boat and the other vehicles back there. But they aren't part of your operation. No. I may have some questions later, but I'd like to hear if there are any other comments. Um, From the neighbors, Are, are there neighbors here from that? Uh, the yeah. Familiar faces. Yeah. Um, and and would so we 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 may well come back to you, okay. sir. But but I didn't make copies. But did you want to see the, the lease agreement for the parking spaces? Uh, I don't edition? think so. But those are leases for off-site, obviously off-site. Off yes. But it doesn't change. The, I think all we're concerned with is what you're asking what for. Well, one. The, whether to it can be extended, but two. Um, um, well, I'm curious, how many cars is that for the off-site? Two. Two, two vehicles. But it doesn't change what he's asking to do here. Hmm. Curious. Okay. Um, would Would anyone else like to address the board about this application? Sure. Yes, sir. My name is Justin Kemp, <coughs> 21 Hooker Avenue. So we're right next door. We're the closest neighbors. Um, we share a property line really close together. Yeah. And, um, we feel that all of the kind of stipulations that we came up with this the last meeting we had last year worked out very well. Um, I feel like the number of cabs and the way that we've met it, the gotten people off the street parking and just tried to make things tidy up a little bit has been helpful and that doesn't really bother us that they're there. Um, 
than the operating out there where they are now. When you say us, you're, who are, other than yourself? Speaking for myself and my wife. Actually. Okay, and you live right next door. And I guess I chatted with other neighbors just to find, I don't, I don't think anyone else is here tonight. But, um, so the fact that no complaints, I mean the whole, the biggest reason, frankly, we had this six month temporary um, applicant, a temporary year permit was as kind of a trial period, uh, not only for the applicant, but for the neighbors to have the opportunity to to uh, to come back and let us know, and and so the, I guess I'm I'm encouraged by the fact that no that, it, that the fact that no complaints were filed with the city was not a fluke. It it seems like there has been an improvement. Yeah, that's right. Do you have a reaction to the proposed increase in the number of cars? Not necessarily. I guess um, I it's it's hard. I think what Jeff was saying that is that he like it. It never, it, it's always kind of moving around, so it doesn't ever seem like there's consistently anything happening. It's always random. And so I, I can't imagine it would be a problem. I guess it would be nice if the residents had knew that we could bring up an issue with somebody if, if one came up. But I mean, in this case, I would probably, if there was, I'd just talk to Jeff about it. But um, uh, an increase of one vehicle doesn't seem to be a problem, but. Um, I guess we'd have to say, I don't know if it's like one and then maybe a couple more, it might be a problem after that. But it's, well, it's two. It's not one, it's two. One would be unregistered. And then like, like I said, I think they park unregistered vehicles back behind the building. We can't really see it from where we're at. And there, there, are, there is another business operating out of the, or there's a, another people, other people operating out of the building, but they're not there on a consistent basis. But they do park there. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? Thoughts? <clears throat> my only my only thought is that you know this is it's, it's not an unsubstantial increase, and it would have been one thing to go ahead with a permanent um, permit as was, but what we're agreeing to. You know, if we do this on a permanent basis, is as was plus, and I don't, and we haven't really had an opportunity to see whether or not that would make a difference. That's my own thought. I assume we have the authority to do, or do we have a, to do a, a, another one year at the increased level? Sure. We can do that if we wanted to. I hate to make the applicant keep coming in, but I don't know if that addresses, if that would address the concern some board members might have about the fact that, well, this worked out, but now we're expanding it. I mean, it would, it would but it, it also sounds like the neighbors don't have any problem with it, so yeah. I don't want to be the person responsible for saying no or making a mutation. But um, to that point, might the abutters not be aware that this request for additional um, increased use? Right. On the one hand, they would have received have notice. Have. They, they received read. notice. Um, we don't send the applications out, but we there's there's information about where you can find the application. Um, so there's no way to know how many people actually looked at the application. Uh, it would be a fair assumption that they would assume that the application was um, consistent with the conditions we set last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably, if I were new, would assume when I got that notice, oh, they're just renewing it. But right, right. They could have checked, but, but not everybody does. Well, um, I, I, excuse, I think the applicant was. Uh, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd just like to respond to that. Um, you know, we're, we're a community-based business. We do our best to work with the community, and I've gotten to know the neighbors on the street. And you know, well, I've done our best. We've done our best at Cosmic Cab to alleviate any traffic concerns, and that would just continue even with an extra vehicle. Like I said, I'm looking to offset some of the parking 
anyway, so I'm looking to get more vehicles away from there. As it is now, there'll only be one taxi coming and going for, for the, you know, the immediate short term, and then hopefully I'll be able to alleviate any traffic at that because I'll be parking everything in more, um, you know, accessible spots around the city where I can find commercial parking and then just be using that for maintenance and, uh, you know, for, for storage and maintenance. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Carolyn, just, just a reminder, does the application run in favor of the applicant or with the land, so to speak? In other words, it sounds like the applicant has been very responsive and conscientious. If, for example, he sold the business to another owner who took over the operation business who wasn't as responsive, obviously they'd have to comply with the, yeah. with the conditions, but, but that owner could step into the shoes and get the benefit. That owner does not have to come back here right. for a whole new, right. new it permit. Goes okay. It goes with the property. Just want people to be clear about that. But as you said, the conditions apply to whoever's yeah. operating. Right. I just I think there might be some confidence on the part of the neighbors that this applicant has shown good sensitivity and you know neighborly uh, 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 conscientious uh, efforts. But I was just curious about that point. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Or um, I, I wonder if the um, that distinguish dis distinction between indoor and outdoor parking might be helpful because if the if zoning and outward effects of the business uh, is, is concerned mostly with the outward effects of the business if he's got um, say the he's asking for having an unregistered vehicle parked um, if he's just if he just puts it inside if he's got room inside then it's not causing an outward uh, increase right but I think I think Carolyn's comment on that was normally zoning we're concerned with exterior impact but but it's also a legitimate consideration in terms of just the the overall impact on the site in a sensitive residential neighborhood so that it, it doesn't mean we, we can't take into account the added intensity of use by virtue of having vehicles indoors mm -hmm. right is that a right. fair description um, anything else or any other information needed from the applicant before we move to close the public hearing? Move to close the public hearing. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Um, and I guess just a motion on the request for the permit. Actually, it's a commercial funding, technically, right? For the commercial funding. Move to. Um, not really. <laughs> if you're willing to, it's yeah. a little bit. It's, uh, it's, it's complex. It is. Okay, so. You, you have this, uh, Elizabeth? Give me that. I have this and this, which are the last conditions. I don't have the. Um, oh, the just to identify the motion. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I move that we approve the um, application for commercial planning for Cosmic Cab at 23 Booker Ave. Map ID 24D-125 with the following conditions, and please don't hesitate to interrupt with friendly amendments. Um, it will be the same conditions as in the prior permit, except um, it will be instead of no more than five cabs operating at the site, there will be no more than six cabs operating at the site. Um, and then instead of no more than three cabs parking overnight, there will be no more than four cabs parking overnight. Um, and then instead of no unregistered vehicles related to cab business allowed on site, um, it will allow one unregistered vehicle on site. And um, need to adjust the storage overnight, right? Just if you do the forecast. Well, is parking and storage the same thing? Where's the well, I think it's, well, one says under the staff report it says 
stored and under the plan uses as parking. So if it's parking, then we can let's go with parking. Yeah. And more than three caps parking. So it would be four caps Four caps parking. parking. Um, and then the one additional one would be that the unregistered vehicle would be stored inside. And did you want to talk about term, a limited term? Um, I, don't, I, don't yeah, I, I don't feel the need either. I think the applicant has really shown a good, uh, good effort. And I don't feel the need to, to make the applicant keep coming back. Or, you know, it's, it makes it hard to run a business and plan for the future. Okay, second. Good. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the second item on the agenda, we're 12 minutes, 15 minutes behind schedule, is the request for a commercial finding for a non-conforming buffer and special permit for higher than eight foot fence by ER and R Cooper Partnership at 3 Main Street, Florence, map ID 23A-85. And we would have no board members sitting if if everyone had to recuse themselves who oh, did not eat at Cooper's and her other, but, uh, <laughs> but Elizabeth uh, is going to accuse herself. Do I need to leave the room or can I just sit here? Because I'm coming back, right? Yeah. The last one. Um, I, I mean, it's up to the board. Yeah. Technically, You're you should supposed to go leave outside. the room. Yeah, you can sit outside on the bench and we'll come and get you. Or you can put your back to the <laughs> Um, so, uh, we have a representative of the applicant. Yes, hi. Um, <clears throat> Carolyn, is that a projector available? Oh, situation? That's, that's okay. Yeah. I, I can do a little preamble while the technology yeah, comes to life here. And I think the previous applicant was already out. So, but just, uh, while uh, while we wait for the electrons, I'll just introduce myself and who's with me tonight. My name is Bucky Sparkle. I am the civil engineer for the project with this engineer. I am also here with uh, Peter Finkler from Dodson and Finkler and uh, the applicants, uh, Richard Cooper and Kevin Kay. Uh, and, uh, nope, that's okay. Put that aside. So, uh, in, in essence, uh, what, what we're hoping to do is at the address of 3 Main Street in Florence, and I'm not in the way. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, and this is the site of the former F.J. Rogers bike shop. That building has been abandoned for a little while. It has been purchased by uh, ERR, ERNR, uh, Cooper Partnership. The intention is to remove the building and in its place install a parking lot that would be for the sole use of staff for Cooper's Corner. So this would not be a public parking. It wouldn't be for people who are shopping at the store. It would be posted as, as private parking 24 hours. Um, the site is one type of an anchor. It's a zone general business. Uh, to the east and west, it's also a business zone. To the north, it does abut uh, residential URB zoning. So there are a few situations uh, that bring us here to the ZBA instead of, say, the planning board, which is the building department. Uh, one of the main issues we have uh, is the bylaw normally requires between a business and a residential zoning to be a 30-foot buffer. Uh, that does not exist currently. It is uh, a few inches to uh, the greatest is about 1.8 feet, I think, uh, where the building comes right up against the back lot line. Uh, so providing a 30-foot buffer on a 100-foot deep lot is, is not reasonable. It's a pre-existing, non-conforming situation anyway. Uh, additionally, uh, so what we're hoping to do there is uh, once we get some of the visuals up, you'll see that there are a couple of garages, so there's a little section where there's a visual connection between the residential property and what would be the parking lot. So we're looking to install a six-foot privacy fence in that space. Uh, to the east, though it's zoned business, uh, is a residence, and uh, we've been in communication uh, with the residents. That's okay. Um, and for uh, a few reasons, they've actually requested that instead of standard privacy fence, that we install a 10 foot tall privacy fence, which is taller than the 8 foot that would normally be allowed by right. So uh, we're looking for a special permit for that. 
and uh, they're, they want to see the parking lot. And also there is currently, the old FJ Rogers building is now being used as a trellis for vegetation that's growing there. Um, some of that, uh, the residents don't want anymore, but some of it they do want to keep. So uh, they're, they're looking for another large, massive structure, actually, to kind of replace the wall that they're about to lose when the building goes away. And uh, uh, the, the owners are not they're amenable to this. They're, they're willing to do it, but of course it requires asking. Since we're here anyway, we may as well make that request. Um, a couple other things I'll mention. Um, uh, presently, the site is almost entirely in pervious area. There's uh, just a couple hundred square feet of, of green belt to the side, so it's 92% impervious. There's no stormwater management uh, systems whatsoever. It just drains off uh, over to David Murphy's property to the west. And uh, we're looking to remedy that as well, since we have an opportunity to take out the building. We're looking to install a catch basin on site that would have uh, an inlet filter, uh, which would remove the total suspended solids and the turbidity. We'd be well exceeding uh, the stormwater management standards with, with that little system. We would then move to a dry well uh, on site. We've got pretty sandy soils in that part of the world. So instead of letting water just run off as it does right now to uh, the west of David Murphy's end to the city right away, there's a catch basin right in front of the, the street, or right in front of the building. Uh, we want to basically keep all that on site. So we're able to capture all the stormwater. So this is going to be a benefit to the neighbors uh, as well as the municipal system. Uh, you know, my presentation is where all my notes were in my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I have looked at this plan for, you know, a couple of hours, so it, it's coming back. Um, they are looking for 10 parking spaces. Um, uh, they're all above the minimum. And uh, let's see what other should be built. going to be using the existing curb cut. There's currently a curb cut and a parking space on site. So we're just gonna leave that in place, extend a little driveway off of that and into the, the private parking area. The front of the property being the street side as a landscape buffer is being installed. Currently it's just brick and concrete. Uh, while not necessarily not attractive, it's gonna look a lot nicer uh, when Dodson Kinkler is done with it, and we do have their plan. And if we get a chance to have Peter talk about it, if you're interested in those details, he can talk to you about that. But consideration has been given in the planting plan to make sure that the vegetation does not impinge uh, the driver's view of the street, so we're not impinging the sight distance issues. We can see the pedestrians coming. Um, we're going to add a tree up front where there isn't a tree, uh, as well as rhododendrons and a, a few other attractive plants. The east side of the property is going to be a mulch line. There's going to be just a little bit of grass around the perimeter on the north and the west. And that's the so, essence so, of the application so the only, a thousand words. Mm -hmm. So the only issues before us are the need to make a determination. This is basically a pre-existing non-conformity. For the buffer. <laughs> for the that, buffer. We have the yes. buffer and we have the fence. And the fence. So Those are the only two things that would be That's, that's essentially okay. it, yes. And, and, and the buffer is a pre-existing nonconformity, and in that respect, you are reducing the nonconformity? That's true. The, right now, it's 1.8 feet between the building right now and the uh, lot line. We're providing, it's still narrow, it's two and a half feet, but it is wider uh, by about a foot. Uh, in terms of we're going to install a green belt there, but also a privacy fence as to uh, sort of meet the spirit of the buffer's requirement. Right. And the standard there is <clears throat> whether the change is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. that would be right fine. now there's no buffer. There's just a big old building right. right there. Okay. And, and that's which sides? So uh, the the connection between the residential side. Right. There's three abutters, right? There are three abutters. So um, picture in a thousand words. So the, the to the north is the residential district, and there's a garage. So if we have the lot line, the garage takes up on the neighbor's garage takes up about half of that space. Another neighbor's garage is on the side. So there's just this little L section. 
which is most of that hell is, is along the residential side. Um, I'm not sure I can tell you the dimension off the top of my head. It's maybe 20 feet uh, of, of fencing. So it's not conforming in all, on all sides, but differently. Yeah, the, the building is built up to within inches of the lot line everywhere except for the front. Uh, it's about 11 or 12 feet off the lot line, or maybe it's a sidewalk. Uh, there's just a little bit of brick. But yeah, to, the, to all the abutter sides, it's, it's a wall. Right up, right up to the lot line. Of course, general business. Mm -hmm. There are no side setbacks or setbacks. But, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get rid of a large mass of uh, blocky building and uh, put up some trees, some landscaping, and uh, have a much lower a lower vista. And it sounds like you're improving the drainage quite a bit. We're going from there should nothing be useful no. to something that meets full stormwater standards, which is no no runoff off site at all. Actually, for storms, for the two-year storm, if you're familiar with storm design, uh, there there won't be any runoff from the site whatsoever. Uh, we're, we're getting into the 10-year storm. And even at that, the discharge is still only 10% of what's coming off now. Uh, is it an increase of impervious surface? We're actually reducing the impervious reducing. surface. It's just there's no control now. Right. So a simple filter and even a, a modest-sized dry well on, a, on such a tiny slot make a huge difference to what's running off the site. Right. Right. Sorry, there's some problems with the software. <laughs> reboot it. But I did, did you get DPW comments that I, I got no. to you? Oh, yeah, this yes. This afternoon. It was uh, late. Yes. Okay. Um, this last year, there are like <laughs> DPW comments <laughs> here. If you want to, yeah. <coughs> yeah. And then I can put the you know, yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's, that's okay. I should have grabbed it right before the meeting started. Yeah. Sorry. Um, there's a problem with the battery, too. So. Oh, jeez. Yeah. there, 10 foot high there. Well, you assume it's going to work, just like that. I mean, I, I didn't bring an easel. I, I do have plans. Or yeah. They have plans, there. yeah. yeah I'm, I'm drawing drawings in the air. Right. Some, some projects we couldn't pull that off. We, we shouldn't. We really shouldn't. We've had a conversation with this. Oh, thank you. This can't be heard under all Thank you. Sorry. Um, and hopefully, if we get the visuals, or if necessary, I suppose we can, we can ask to, for an explanation if you have a question about the plans. Do you yes. have a specific question about the plans? Yes. We were. While we're doing that, maybe I should read the comments from DPW. Please, which I don't I, think I'd you've even heard. No, I have, I have not. So you're I have not. I did suspense here. I sat down with the, the stormwater management people before, but let's see what they came up with. Um, the, uh, the contractor shall coordinate with the water. First of all, under the topic of demolition. Okay. The contractor shall coordinate with the water and sewer departments regarding abandonment procedures for cutting and capping existing services. And then Main Street, I'll just read this. Main Street is under a five year pavement cut moratorium. Oh, okay. Through the 2019 construction season. Do you have PowerPoint on this software? Then do that, otherwise, who knows what will happen. Uh, I'm sorry, so there's. Uh, you, we can't get it into the pavement until next year. Well, it says saying. it's under a five year pavement cut moratorium through 29 construction season. Any trenching, here we go, any trenching in the street this year will require a mill and overlay the full width of the street 20 uh, feet beyond the trench limits okay. in all directions. Right, that's, that's significant for what we're trying to do. Maybe we can figure out how to do a cut and cap um, on, at the property line that would satisfy the DPW, uh, even if it were just considered temporary until spring of next year, if we need to come all the way out to the water main. And because okay. normally you go, if you can, you go right to the water main and, and shut the service off right there. Uh, and that court. But we don't need the water. Uh, so as long as we can make a positive, you know, it's not, if it's not leaking now, it's not gonna leak later. So I can, I can talk to the DPW and see if we can figure something out that doesn't require us re milling and repaving uh, the entire width of 
of uh, Main Street, yeah, just for okay. a, a slightly better disconnect than we can provide at the lot line. Right. We'll come back to the overall procedural issue with DPW, but let me just read you the, there are five more bullet points on okay. the DPW comments. The existing curb cut is approximately 12 feet wide. Are there any concerns with vehicle conflicts entering and exiting the lot? I'll just move on. The proposed drive aisle behind the sidewalk is an angled design that leaves a small trapezoid next to the property line that appears to be existing bituminous concrete. Why is an angled approach proposed as, as to a straight design? The applicant should consider maintaining the existing continuity of pavement with the adjoining drive property. And then third point, any damage to the existing concrete curb cut and or sidewalk shall be repaired in kind. That was under the heading of driveway. The next one point under details, it is recommended that the vertical clearance of the private parking sign, which is on sheet four detail seven, be increased to seven feet to meet NUTCD standards. And then last point under stormwater, the proposed stormwater system requires routine inspection and maintenance. So they want to sow me a, a, a site-specific stormwater. The applicant must submit a site-specific stormwater operation maintenance plan for the proposed stormwater system to the DPW for review and approval. The approved plan must be recorded in the land records with the planning board decision. So you're also going to planning board? No. What? No. So they, well, whatever. They, they, they meant zoning yeah. board decision. Yeah. So Carolyn, um, procedurally, before we get to the presentation and further discussion, these DPW comments, just because I'm holding them, um, is that something where we can simply make as a condition that the applicant will resolve comments and questions with DPW to DPW satisfaction, or do we need to address more specifically those concerns with conditions? So um, I think that you would need, if you feel that's appropriate, and I think in some instances it, it would be, you need to make a condition as opposed to saying go resolve this with DPW. There's certain items that have to be resolved anyway, so the way that they tie in or cap the water line, for example, is one of them that doesn't need to be a condition. Um, so um, I don't think the, you know, for demolition, um, you don't need to condition that they coordinate with DPW about that. Um, but um, the, um, the one that I would say would be, um, you know, damage to existing curb cut or sidewalk should be repaired in kind. Um, could be, um, it could makes be sense. As a yeah, and then as as well um, that um, that they meet the METCD standards for um, parking. And also submittal of a um, stormwater inspection. Okay. Um, what about this this business about milling? Um, um, that is the something. The entire width of the street. That's a, that's a DPW city standard. So there's nothing that you can do to say you don't have to meet that. Or um, on the other hand, you don't need to condition that because it, it is a standard it is. that has to be set. Every, no anybody has to. Everybody who wants to. Do anything in a street has been made. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. So maybe we can not get into the street. Exactly. You might be able to figure out another way to deal with it, but yes. there's nothing the board can do to say to waive the five-year moratorium. I don't believe so. What's the date of these DPW comments? They came in today. Okay. It's dated May 20th, but they came in right today. Yeah. So I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Well, why don't we go back to uh, um, yeah. this? Yeah, I kind of give it a, a lot of the. the content of the, the presentation. We do have a, a point about a trapezoidal uh, access. Um, I don't know if this will That's work. That's not going to work. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, not some of these screens are reflective. Those are not. OK, yeah. So um, and I don't have a, a cursor here. I, so. I am plugged that mouse, but you can plug it back in just because I had to put your USB. OK. Does it not show up? Yeah, not sure up. OK. So, um, the trapezoidal area, the reason I came in a bit of an angle is because the, the existing curbstones don't quite line up the lot line. Uh, so I was making sure that we kept our access you know, on, on the pave or on, the, on our property. So, and as well as not extend the impervious area unnecessarily. However, it is not a big deal for us to scooch it over. I can get it really close to 90 degrees. It might be 87 and a half degrees or something like that. From a driver's perspective, it will effectively be a perpendicular intersection. Um, with a 12-foot 
uh, pathway, driveway, it is effectively a one-way. So you, you don't need 12 feet to get a car uh, in and out of there, so drivers would have no difficulty coming in perpendicular to the intersection when they're, they're departing, coming into traffic. So there's plenty of pavement for them to get that, the car straight. Uh, so there aren't any impediments along those lines. Where's the tree in re uh, relation to that um, trapezoidal area? The proposed, okay, so the next, this is the landscape plan. Let's see if we can get the mouse to come back alive. So the larger circle here, that shot up over there, that is a sweet gum tree. And then the plantings are all in this section. Uh, that. But uh, the trees that you're protecting, where are they? Uh, in the trees that are being protected, okay, are the purple, so purple circles? This, the mouse keeps disappearing after I stop. Very good. Uh, so there is one tree to the east that is on the abutters property. Uh, we're going to do tree protection around that. And to the west, there are two trees that are adjacent, uh, on the maple and the locust, I believe, uh, that are right on the lot line, uh, but more prominently on, on David Murphy's property. Uh, so that's also going to get uh, the, the, uh, the planks and the tree wrap strapping around it down around the root zone as well. So you wouldn't have any objection to a condition requiring uh, uh, that the tree protection be inspected <laughs> and approved by the city? It's going to be so right out of me. Like yeah. 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 Did you have, did you have, both have a question about spec or something you saw on the plan? A question had to do with where the 10 foot and other height fences were. Okay. Right, so this plan, I'll, this time I showed a little more easily. Screens are never as big as you want them to be. Um, so the six foot fence is along the back lot line. So you can see the existing garage that is going to provide quite a large visual buffer. The residence is back here. And that, I don't think I did that. Uh, postpone, how's that sound? Not in 10 minutes, so wait a minute. Four hours. <laughs> postpone. Get the next guy. Oh my gosh, okay, great. Um, so, uh, the mouse has gone away. So, uh, the residence is in the back, uh, and this is the gap between the two garages that we're going to do the six foot fence. Uh, and then essentially starting at the front of the garage here, along the eastern lot line, we're going to come down and extend a, a 10 foot fence, mimicking the existing wall until an existing hedge line. There's really a, a really nifty, I don't know if you know the site, I can go back to the pictures, but there's a lovely hedge, it's an arch that you walk through. So we're going to bring, we're going to bring the fencing down to that point. Uh, so the neighbor has a, it kind of has the mass that they're, they, they've been counting on. So the, the long, the 10 foot one runs along uh, this line here. Is it exactly on the line or just over onto the uh, a butter's property, essentially giving it to them. Actually, uh, there was some intention to do that, but because of the root system of the existing vegetation, <clears throat> the proposed fence is going to be, I think, just like four inches onto Cooper's property. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And on the west side? On the west side, it's just going to be open. It's, it's already parking. Uh, there's already pavement, and driveway, and, and parking right there, so there's no. It's business to business over there. Any other questions before we ask the public for mm -hmm. uh, comments? A lot of the EPW comments was about um, stormwater maintenance. Yeah, operation Which, They require the applicant to submit a <coughs> stormwater maintenance. So screen. does that mean the DPW hasn't seen this dated April 16th, including the winter maintenance plan of stormwater collection? No, what they're saying is it needs to be, go on record. Yeah, an agreement. Um, and, an agreement with the city based on what was submitted. So um, right. they would have made comments about the mm -hmm. that, but they're just saying that basically needs to be um, recorded. Okay, so the uh, the plan itself doesn't have to be a 100-page report. Okay. It can be uh, one or two pages. So oh, right, or a couple of pairs, as long as it covers what they're... Um, right maintenance requirements are of this. Okay, thank you. They're rudimentary. Yeah. Any, anything else? We can come back to the application. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone here uh, from the public who wanted to, I guess, sir, in the back? You want to go with the 
Okay. I'm Bruce Dufresne. I live at 1 Main Street. And me and my partner Dave with Rich have agreed that we would like to have the 10 foot fence. We've got a Plant things all along it, of which some we can save, we want to save, others we'll just have to let go. We have the hollies that we want to save. And we built the trellis in a matter of uh, being prepared when it's demolition time. And the entire project, our concern is that is our only private area. When, without a fence there, we're surrounded by pavement, we're out in the open. We will have no private area. So fence is very important. And height is important too. And looking at one more thing that we want to request is not to terminate at the edge of our garage, but at least a certain distance behind the garage where we have a chimney. Because we spend most of our time out in the garage, which is really a recreation area. We're out there with company, we're out there all winter long, and that would leave a, that opening would just uh, prevent us from using that space. If we use that, that space between what would be the, what is now the wall and the chimney in our place, it's about that wide. We, we store a lot of uh, hostas and plants in that area in the, in the winter, and then when you go around the backside and come in, we use that whole area for storing all kinds of uh, metal work for, with our garden. So we would be losing all that space behind our garage that we use if uh, there wasn't a fence there. And I think the whole project would look much better if there was a continuous fence from the parking lot side rather than stopping for a garage and starting again and going. And I cannot speak for our backside neighbor how they would want their fence. Are they, they're not here? No, it's one elderly woman um, and a son who lives not with her but close by. And exactly what they would want, I don't know. So I can't, I can't suggest anything for what they would want. But if the, but if the 10 foot high fence could continue at least to, to our chimney and then from there go down to six, six feet, then we would be happy with that. And also in the front part where we have the hedges, um, in discussing that with uh, Rich Cooper, we thought that the fence would extend a few feet further towards the street, rather than it terminating at the hedges. With a swoop down, though. It can, it can swoop that way. Yeah. Okay. And is there anything in you want to say that I might have missed, Dave? Well, uh, well my name is Dave Mallon. I also live at One Main. Um, I'm the abutter. Um, like, like Bruce said, we're the ones, you know, we actually requested and has, have spoken with Rich, and um, and we've actually worked, you know, been working together, and um, Rich has been very nice. And uh, we spoke about, um, I mean, I don't know if this if this is a variance just for a ten foot fence, which is fine, or if this is a final plan. Um, is this what's proposed and what would be done, or is that that's another thing? Yeah, I'll let the applicant respond but but I think the fence the only matters before us are the fence um, and the buffer um, although we, we we will take into account the entire plan to the extent we need to to make our determination about uh, compliance with the ordinance both uh, the finding on the buffer and the permit for the fence so I mean it's kind of all on the table but I don't know if the, if, if, if you have no other comments, maybe we'll see if the applicant is able to respond. Because I, as I understand it, you're, you're now raising, at least with the extension of the fence, something that's not presently in the plan and maybe hasn't been communicated well, I'm before to mentioning it now because um, not knowing if 
all you want now is to uh, approve a 10-foot fence, then what I, a lot of what I'm saying is not necessary. But I still would like to mention it because I'm saying we would like it to be a little longer than uh, what is on the plans and if that makes a difference or not. Yeah, so I think what I think you would need to approve the additional height of the fence and you can take into consideration whether or not it's appropriate to extend it the full length of that side of the property, but what's on the plans plus conditions become a permit. They can't be Also it would be good for Rich and, and his planners to know what you know we wish and and how how to work things right. out. And I think so I think the question becomes is the applicant able to decide kind of on the spot here uh, that the requests you've made are acceptable. In that which be, case, I think in, in this during this hearing, right. we can hear about some slight modifications. But whatever is approved at this hearing is all that they can do. So mm -hmm. uh, it's good to get it out in the open, um, but, but it's not before us if, unless the applicant says, you know, yes, we can, that's something we can do, or um, if the applicant says, no, we can't do that, at least not on the fly right now, the options are for us to approve as proposed or for it to be a continuance to come back again. But why don't we give them a minute to talk? Well, and I just wanted to add, you know, I mean, we're in favor of the 10 foot fence. Right. Uh, obviously, we're, you know, we're, we actually are the one that requested it. Requested right. it. From Rich has been very nice in working with us. Right. Um, We'd like to be taller, but yeah, we'll, we'll go. But we didn't. But we didn't see until now that the that the that the fence stops behind the garage and doesn't continue behind the garage, which is a space about this wide, and we would lose that. We lose our. We would, that's our property. Right. And we use that for we use that for storage and for wintering over the plant. The proposed fence is on the applicant's property. The applicant will own it and have to continue to maintain it. The property line is actually the surface of the building. That's that's why it's a it's a right. It's it was a tricky it was situation. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. So even with the extension. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, it would yeah. be on, on right. the applicant's property. How do you feel about that? Okay, well, so that would be continuous down. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Just it would be continuous in the L shape. Dropping down to six feet after it passes by our open space. Uh, no, no, it, it wouldn't be. I just imagine that. Yeah, our open space all the way down to the garage. Oh, yeah, yeah, at the garage. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds like they wanted to come in. In the front, it would just come down. Yeah, I was going to say, so would there be a sight line issue at the front where the hedges and you can't have 10 feet going to curve? Exactly. That, that, that's what I meant. That's why it would, it would, it, it would only, it's only going to extend another two feet. Yeah, so would, what Carolyn is saying is that under the ordinance, Within five feet of the curb, it and can the only sidewalk. of the sidewalk yeah. in this case, it can only be three feet high, and that's a safety issue. Sight lines for vehicles coming and going, and look you. So, so I think that's a practical concern. But even a, a, a sloping fence down to the street, it's got to oh, be it, no it, higher than three feet for five be, feet from the sidewalk. Be, uh, well, fifteen feet away from the. 15 feet away from the street, the sidewalk, the fat side of the sidewalk instead of it coming down. So, uh, well, the last section, of it, yeah. well, this is, I mean, we didn't know that we would have to, you know, um, be prepared to or if it, if it's not terminate, if it terminates at that the edges of the front, uh, parallel with it, that would, that's fine, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the green area is 10 feet back from the well, He's saying, no, no, so well, well, I mean, I'm little. not sure we're going to take the time here right. okay. during the hearing so to work. Uh, right, to, really to, not to, well, to have significant revisions to the plan. It's yeah. something where if the applicant can make a very quick decision, and I don't really want to put the applicant under pressure okay. either. So the, so, the, so the alternative. Give them one more minute, and then we can talk about alternatives. Uh, I mean, this isn't really the time or place to be. We thought that we thought that this was specifically just to allow variance for a ten-foot fence. 
to the we chief. Didn't realize, we, we didn't realize, we didn't, we weren't, we didn't know that this was, that the plan Peter Peter was just that exactly going to be, yeah. you know, like that's the final plan. No, I understand, and I'm not, I'm not, um, there are no criticisms here, it's yeah. just in terms of, we have another applicant waiting uh, for the agenda. Right, okay. Normally, so I think or turn the hearing at into a work session. On, Main Street, so on the Main Street side. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should I be in on this? Well, yeah. yeah. We're going to stop the fence so at, the, at the hedge on the Main <laughs> Street. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think we're going to stop. Gonna so so you want to take other comments while they're working? No. Yeah. 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 They may want to hear it, but so they, they don't mind. Yes, you were standing at the parking lot and looking toward Okay, I'm David Murphy and I'm the butter on the west side. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, this is the parking lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right now, okay. yes. the building so, that's there, I got the parking uh, which right. covers yeah. most of the site, from the, from all the water all the way down to the bypass line, yes. and yes. then yes. Real it's terminating right. at on this side. Right. And, uh, and yeah. 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 aesthetically, so that's going to have it. Peter, yeah, right. So I have to do with It's true. This area is then into the planting. Then, after the chimney, does your during the chimney, does your planting? I think your planting zone has a little bit of front trees. Uh, uh, right right you don't want to your the the where the fence ends, ends side, your planting zone um, begins. I don't think they added with the Okay, there's still a gap. It's possible to take, even take the last section of the fence and swing that down. And they trained the plant to grow the side of the building. Like so maybe it would be like about because they you can know, just put them back on that the far so really right. I mean, we'll make um, a new corner. And then in the back yeah. corner, yeah. So we each couple of you know, the and that little L well, because we do have a we do have a garden on the north side uh, and, and the, the building the east side. The building extends uh, very narrow probably. space. Like and I know you're thinking about past our past that you edge. Oh, yeah. you know, and like I said, any, anywhere in here. But the woman in that house now is legally kind of blind, so she's not yeah, going to do this. I know, I know. But I think, but I think, I mean, if you're obviously, we'll figure, 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 figure out okay. the best way to do yeah. it. Or just or really, yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah. But most of most of that site is blocked by that garage. I just don't know. It fixes the drainage directly. And until I see, you know, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I hadn't really, you know, if I would, you know, go and look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. If I misspeak, do we have an answer? <laughs> I think I think so. Um, in, in general, it's a yes. Uh, particularly in regards to uh, get the mouse to come back alive here. Uh, I, it, there is there is a degree of logic. So if we started a six foot fence um, <coughs> back at the where we were going to have a six foot fence and extend that around. Or we were actually going to stop along the side of the building. Right. Um, but let's continue the six foot fence to the chimney, move up to a 10 foot tall fence, and provide a little additional screening back there. And that 10 foot fence would then continue uh, all the way to the hedge line in the front. Boy, that mouse doesn't want to stay away. Mm. Uh, there we go. So the 10 foot fence would then follow the property line down to the hedge. And it seems like that we can bring it another couple feet past the hedge. Is yeah. that well, if you, if you have a picture of the the ground level view? Uh, let's see, I've got all of our plans here. You mean to keep, keep, the, the, beginning of the, to keep the five foot sight line from the sidewalk? Uh, uh, oh, I see. That it's further back than that. I don't, I don't have a good shot of one there. Now there's nothing here. Um, but the building does come out past the, so that has a little bit. Yeah, by, by a little bit, so we could actually by six feet. But, so, um, I'm Peter Flaker, Dotson and Flaker, 40 Main Street, Florence. Um, so, we had planned, there's a tall hedge that comes right up to the wall of the building and makes, makes a sort of corner there, and then there's a, a gateway through the hedge. So, the idea was to have the 10 foot fence come up and make that corner again. Um, but, if there's some concern that that's going to open up some visibility of the parking after we tear the building down. So, I think what we just agreed is that we'll look at that again find a way to extend the fence if we need to, to make a nice neat sort of corner to comply with the zoning by coming down to the three feet within five feet of the property line and sort of button that all up nicely. Um, we don't know exactly how we're going to do that right this moment. So for purposes of this application and an amendment to your application today, we're not even talking about that because 
you, you will do something that will not require any further. Uh, right. So all we need is the, the variance to get the ten foot fence. Yeah. So we're back to the ten foot fence with the modification that you're going to extend it at well six feet. You can do also, right? Mm -hmm. So re so really nothing's changed in terms of our approval. Your plan has been tweaked a little bit to address the concerns of the abutter in back anyway. Um, but if they're asking to take ten feet another panel, let's say beyond the hedge. <laughs> That would be part of your purview. If they're asking right. to drop it to the six and a half feet, um, then that would be different. You're not. But I would recommend that it wouldn't go beyond go in front of the first parking space. At what height? At, at ten feet. At yeah, but, any height. But you're at any height. Because you've got a whole landscape plan that's there that's supposed to be a visual. Part of the. Uh, right. So I don't think it makes sense to go past the um, front line of that first parking space. Which is 10 feet from the... It's slightly more than 10 feet. Yes, it is 10 feet from the top. Yes. If maybe the condition could be something along the lines of the 10-foot fence could extend as far as 10 feet from the property line. That would allow a little wiggle room for a transition uh, from the full height to either truncation or a gradual step down to six feet or to three feet. But if you just approve that it could go as far, then I think that would provide what we all need here tonight and not have to be back. Yeah. And the standard, because it's pretty rare to be a fence permit application. What is, what is the standard for approving a fence above the allowed height, height allowed as of right? There's not a specific standard for for the special permit, and I think the reason is that it's case by case. Yeah. So what's the purpose of having a taller fence between two commercial and right. zoned properties? Um, so I think you've heard that there's obviously there's a residential use even though it's com commercially zoned, right. and that there's a concern about privacy during the parking lot. So that would be, um, you, you could determine that a special permit were, was appropriate given the circumstances. And it's certainly not precedent setting for anything else. It's about this unique situation. Right, because the first part of 350-6.80 is not applicable. That's a, that's a fence within five feet right. of the front line. The second part just says, no fence shall exceed the height of six and a half feet unless a special permit has been received from the zoning board. That's the extent of our guidance. Right. Unless I mean, we approve there it. Is, there, are, there are general special permit criteria, right. Um, right. but they're kind of, they're much broader yeah, yeah, that's for, for larger bigger projects. projects. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Okay, so it just has to feel right, I guess. So, um, and on the other issue, which is the buffer, it is the standard finding to turn us, uh, right. which is uh, not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing condition. Right. So again, to sort of bring it back to what we have to decide, those are the two things we're thinking about. The, um, the buffer, which is actually the, a reduction of a nonconformity, sure. coupled with other improvements to the site in terms of reduction of impervious surface, dramatic improvement to a non-existing stormwater management infrastructure, uh, which will help the, uh, the property to the west, and it will also keep all stormwater on site, as I, as I understand it. Yes. Um, so I know I'm really comfortable with the finding standard for the buffer. I'm just thinking out loud here, bring this to some kind of closure, hope maybe. And on the fence, there is no specific standard that we apply, uh, just that uh, it, it, approval can be granted. A higher fence can be allowed with an approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals. And, and we've heard from the abutters, the immediately affected abutters. The plan has been modified slightly to address the abutters concern in back with the extension of a six feet, which you can do anyway, but we're kind of approving this as part of the plan presented. Mm -hmm. And there's a the transition that is over the six and a half feet. So, it's, so it's, that would be over six and a half feet. <clears throat> yeah. And then in front, I think our only condition would have to be, it can't be uh, 10 feet closer than 10 feet, or eight and a half feet closer than 10 feet from the sidewalk. Yeah, uh, for, 
from the from the lot line, it, it makes an awful lot of sense. It's from not a lot the, line. Okay. The, where the okay. parking, where the right. parking end. Parking starts. Uh, right, which is 10 feet. Right? Yeah, where the parking space starts, and that's 10 feet. And we may yeah. diminish the height, but if we have permission to go up to 10 feet up to that point, then we'll have our, the landscape architect make it look as good as we can there. Okay, and then the yeah, other the other conditions that we talked about just as a result of the DEP comments <coughs> would be, um, let's see, I know there's this, yeah, we're starting from the bottom, that um, another condition would be that the applicant submits to DPW for review and approval of a specific stormwater operation and management plan that would then have to be recorded with our decision. Uh, and that the site in its entirety uh, complies with MUTCD standards. Specifically, the issue is the private parking sign, I guess. <laughs> and there was one more. Oh, yes, just, just that, um, that you will, the applicant will have the tree protection approved by the city. That would be at the commencement of work, right? Prior to prior, uh, prior to demolition, right? Prior to demolition. Um, so there was one more from the DPW list, but that has to happen. There was just a question about why it was that way. Okay. Didn't seem to be a so did everybody get all that? <laughs> um, yes. Yes. You have it, right? Yes. So yep. would it be possible? Well, first of all, are we are we finished with any input from the applicant and the public? Anyone else have anything else they want to say? Because once we close the public hearing, we can't take any input from anyone, and we'll just continue. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, do you know the height of the existing building that's going to come down? Um, I, I'm going to do it from memory. It is just over 10 feet. I don't know that it is uh, quite 11 feet. Okay. So and the, it does change a little bit along the length of the building. But it's close. It is very close. Mm -hmm. It's short for 11 and a half. 11 and a half. It could be 11 and a half okay. to 12 even. Ah, okay. That was my original number, but I decided I'd come okay. down a little bit. <laughs> any, any other questions or, or comments from me? Before we close the public hearing. So this says nothing. Okay, so I guess a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Uh, uh, all in favor, that's unanimous. And now a motion on the application. Okay, I'll you try that one. To start? Um, I'm, to start? Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, on the application for a commercial finding for a non-conforming buffer and special permit for higher than eight foot fence by ER and our Cooper partnership at 3 Main Florence Avenue 25, I move that we approve the application with the DPW conditions as noted uh, in discussion moments ago and with the change to the uh, site plan for the 10-foot fence section being extended to the abutter's chimney, and it may go as close as 10 feet to the front lot line, other bits of fence to be negotiated within compliance. And the, before demolition, the tree protection must be inspected and approved by the city. A second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Sure. Nice set of plans. So, um, just yeah. so you know, that, um, the planning board and with uh, the city council coming in at 7. So, um, if we can do this. Maybe. Um, and I need to, to get Elizabeth out there. Don't send me home. Thank you. 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 Thank
been a free uh, 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 I Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Glad it worked out. Yes. So thank you. Yeah, she's got it there. Uh, nothing to it, right? I think that's a thumb drive. I do. Thank you. I have to review this myself. So here, use this one screen. So we'll turn it off. That glow from the inside. Sometimes it's a projector. No, no, no. If this, in a pinch, we can probably, Carolyn, in a pinch, can we go to room AC? Oh, sorry. But, so so what, what's happening is this, we have uh, we have this room for 12 more minutes. So, so we have the room for 12 minutes. I'm recusing myself um, uh, because of a conflict and uh, um, and so I'm going to get out of the way and someone else will take over just for this last application for on the agenda. Uh, good evening, I'm Joanne Campbell, and I am uh, the Executive Director of Valley Community Development Corporation, and I have uh, come before you for um, a, a, a sign that is going to be placed on what we're calling the Lumberyard Apartments at 256 Pleasant Street, and it's uh, the area that we've chosen for the sign is, so there's a, this is the front of the building at 256 Pleasant Street, and uh, one part of the building is stepped back a little bit, so there's a, a wall here, and if you come up from um, the highway, you can see this wall, and it's like a perfect place for a sign. So in your package that you would have received, um, we have the design. Um, that shows the, the lettering um, and the placement of the sign on that section of the wall. And um, it's aluminum letters. Uh, the, the reasoning for placing it here is we, we, you know, we want to make a special um, entry into the town. Um, this is a great gateway area. Um, the lumber yard, there's some history here. We've hopefully chosen a design that's attractive and we created uh, the A to make it look like a railroad track to sort of bring in the industrial uh, of the use of the railroad as well as calling the building the lumber yard because it's built on a lumber yard even though it's a brand new building. So we're trying to mi mix old and new together. Um, and it's larger than what's allowed under zoning. Thank you. Um, just noting we have opened a public hearing on the application. Um, kind of in the transfer with uh, David Williams, I mentioned that. Um, thank you. Um, describe the project. I don't see we, we have no we have no one else here. No. Um, does anyone uh, have any questions? Yeah. Thank you. I do not. I read your application, I saw the photo, I thought it looked great, so. I don't have any questions. And there, there are no staff concerns, right? Yeah. Uh, I had a, a one question. So it's not lighted up. It, it, there's no, there's no, no lighting. Internal lighting. And um, it'll be anchored into the letters, or be fa will be fabricated, and will be anchored into the building. And we have had, uh, you know, the architect approve. Um, the both the sign company and the installation company that you know the bricks are penetrable it's not penetrating you probably don't care about this it's penetrating into the insulation of the building or anything the anchors um, will go in I think about an inch and a half into the brick and the brick is very sturdy it's brand new brick thank you so I'm that we close the public hearing and okay so moved second which one of you? Uh, okay, I second. Uh, okay. second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So the public uh, hearing is closed, and, uh, but we are going to continue discussion. Any discussion or interest in forming a motion? Uh, you have to do a motion. Thank you. Unless there's any discussion. Okay. Um, I move that we approve the special permit for the LACDC um, 
for the sign that would be larger than my right at 256 Pleasant Street, um, map ID 32C-171. Can I just just note that the building is owned by, I just want to make sure that the permit is in the name of the, the new entity limited partnership, which we are part of, but because it's a tax credit deal, the owner of the building, it's on the, it's on the yes. application, I just want to make sure it gets in, the, the permit is in the name of Thank you. Lumberyard Northampton we Limited Partnership. We put what's on the application. Mm -hmm. What? We put what's on the application. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you. All in favor? Congratulations. Approved. Thank you very it looks, much. It looks fabulous. Yeah, it looks okay. fabulous. Um, I think we have some oh, minutes. minutes. Yeah. Um, David reviewed minutes. He has no concerns. Uh, regarding the meeting minutes of May 9th. I move that we approve those votes. All in favor? So moved. I so approved. Thank you. And to close the meeting. All right.